Okay, so I think we've spent enough time on injective functions now, and it's time to move on to another category of functions. So let's take a look at surjective functions. Surjective functions are also called onto functions. You might see that phrase being used in a textbook, but uh, most likely in an exam, they will use surjective. So a surjective function is one whose range is equal to its codomain. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with surjective functions. Range equals codomain. In the very first functions video, I mentioned the difference between the codomain and the range of a function. So the codomain is the set of all possible outputs of a function, whereas the range is the set of the actual outputs. And students often get a bit confused as to how they're actually different. But hopefully, um, now that we learn about surjective functions, this will make a lot more sense. So before we can tell if functions are surjective or not, we need to be able to read function notation like this. And some people get a bit intimidated by this kind of function notation, but it's not actually too bad. So it's, this is just the function 2x minus 1. So I could have just wrote that as y equals 2x minus 1. But instead, we are being given some additional information with this real maps to real. So what does that actually mean? Well, the first set that's mentioned is the domain. So they're telling us that the domain, which is the set of input values, is just the set of real numbers. That just means I'm only allowed to input real numbers into this function. I can't go and input complex numbers or something. It's just, it's just not allowed. So then what the second set is, is the codomain. And the codomain is the set of possible outputs. So that means that if I input a real number into this function, I should expect all my outputs to belong to the set of real numbers. So I can't expect to sub in a real number and end up getting a complex number out the other side. That just can't happen. So that's what the codomain means. It doesn't mean that I can generate all the real numbers with this function. It just means that my outputs will be real numbers. Let's use another real life example of a function machine, this time to give some intuition about surge activity. Again, I'm using this juicer as an example of a function. And what does this function do? Well, it takes in whole fruits or vegetables as an input and outputs the juice of that fruit or vegetable. So I've said here that X goes to X juice. So for example, if my input X was apple, then the output is apple juice. So let's think, what is the codomain of this juicer? Remember that the codomain is the set of all possible outputs. So we could say then that the codomain is the set of all possible fruit and vegetable juices. And what's the domain? Well, the domain is the set of input values. So what can I input into my juicer? Well, I suppose whatever I have in my fruit bowl. It's unlikely that I'd have all the fruits and vegetables in the world in my house or in my fruit bowl to use in my juicer. So there's no point in saying that that's my domain. Really, my domain is just all that I can input into my function, which is the fruits in the bowl. Of course, then, the range of juices I can get from my juicer depends on what I have in stock in my fruit bowl. In other words, it depends on the domain. Obviously, if I don't have a certain fruit in my fruit bowl, for example, if I don't have cranberries in my fruit bowl, I can't expect to get cranberry juice in my range. So that means then that the set of actual outputs is not equivalent to the set of possible outputs. In other words, the range is not equal to the codomain. So this function is not surjective. But I suppose what's interesting is that I can make this function surjective if I want to, simply by redefining my function. If I wanted to, I could restrict the codomain and say that although all of my outputs will be fruit or vegetable juices, I can be a bit more specific. My outputs are really just the juices of what's in my fruit bowl, which I guess is like a subset of what I currently have for my codomain. I can restrict this codomain to be equal to the range. In other words, just equal to the juices 
of fruits in bow. And now my function is surjective because the codomain has been restricted to be made equal to the range. Let's move on to a real mathematical function then. Here we have our standard quadratic, f of x is equal to x squared. Currently, it's defined as real maps to real. In other words, both the domain and codomain is a set of real numbers. That means that we can only input real numbers and our outputs will also be real numbers. Just note here that just because you input reals to a function doesn't necessarily imply that your outputs will be real. If my function was, for example, f of x is equal to the square root of x, and if I inputted a negative integer, then my output would be an imaginary number. So my codomain in that case would have to be the set of complex numbers, even if my domain was the set of real numbers. Because I can get both real and imaginary outputs. But let's go back to this example. We want to determine if this function is surjective. In other words, is the range equal to the codomain? Well, can this function generate all of the real numbers? The answer is no, it can't. Because of course, when we square a real number, the result is always positive. That means that the smallest output we can get is zero. And that's when we sub in zero for x. So currently this function is not surjective. If we want to make this function surjective, we need to redefine the function by restricting the codomain. We need to make the codomain equivalent to the range of possible outputs or y values. As we said, the minimum y value or output is zero, but there is no limit to the maximum output we can obtain. This graph continues towards infinity on both sides. Therefore, our range is zero to infinity. Take note of the brackets I've used to describe this set. The square bracket means that we include zero. And the round bracket means that we don't include infinity because technically we can never obtain infinity, only approach it as a limit. When this quadratic function is defined this way with the restricted codomain, then it is surjective. I have a second example here, and this time the function is an exponential function, e to the power of x plus 3. So is this function surjective? Well, for this function to be surjective, we would have to be able to generate all of the real numbers using this function. So our range would have to be equal to the codomain, which is the set of all real numbers. Well, hopefully you can see that that is not the case because e to the power of x will always be positive regardless of the value of x. So the question is then, how can we make this function surjective? How can we redefine the codomain to make it surjective? So maybe you might like to pause the video now and see if you can figure that out. So hopefully you've noticed that we can never get a y value or an output smaller than two from this function. In fact, we have what's called an asymptote at y equals two. So that means that as x gets smaller and smaller, y will get closer and closer to two, but it will never actually be equal to two. Then as x gets bigger and bigger, we see that the y values get infinitely larger and this graph approaches infinity. So what does our restricted codomain look like then?
we have 2 comma infinity. And I've used round brackets here because number one, we don't actually reach two because of the asymptote. And then we can never reach infinity. So the round brackets means we do not include two and we do not include infinity in our set. 